Union representatives say they hope to speak to the Defence Secretary, Sir Michael Fallon, later about the future of Scottish shipbuilding. Sir Michael will be at the BAE yard at Scotston on the Clyde for the naming ceremony of a patrol vessel, HMS Medway. He'll go on to visit Port Glasgow's Ferguson yard. The industry has been invited to provide plans to build five frigates for the Royal Navy, but shop stewards at Unite say they're not sure they can trust government promises on future orders. Union representatives are seeking assurances from the UK government on the future of shipbuilding in Scotland. It comes as the Defence Secretary, Sir Michael Fallon, visited two shipyards on the Clyde today. Our business correspondent, David Henderson, has been speaking to him. Well, the Defence Secretary came here this morning for the naming ceremony for this warship, HMS Medway. She's the second of five offshore patrol vessels to be built here. That event took place this morning. And when this vessel and her sister ships are complete, the workforce here will turn their attention to a batch of Type 26 anti-submarine warships, which will be built here on the Clyde over the course of the next 20 years. But um, the unions here are not impressed with changes to the government's tendering process, which may see the next generation of frigates built at other yards right around the United Kingdom. But Sir Michael Fallon told me that the process was fair and that this yard and other yards on the Clyde had a great future ahead of them. The Clyde is turning out frigates. I cut steel on the first one back in July, HMS uh, Glasgow. There will be seven other heavy frigates. That's 20 years worth of work. There's no other industry in Britain that has such certainty. 20 years worth of work for the Clyde, guaranteed. Well, it's emerged in recent days that the company which owns and operates this yard, BAE Systems, is looking to partner with another shipbuilding firm, Camel Laird, with a view to building the next generation of frigates uh, on Merseysides. BAE, though, have told me that even if the structures of those ships are built in England, the design and engineering capacity, the combat management systems, the really sophisticated parts of the process will be uh, worked on from here, which means that many of those high-skilled workers who are currently working on the Type 26 frigates will continue to operate here and will simply turn their attention to those other warships wherever they're built around the United Kingdom. The Defence Secretary, Sir Michael Fallon, has said no other industry has as much certainty as shipbuilding on the Clyde as he moved to allay union concerns over future Navy orders with work on a new Type 31E frigate to be open to bids from around the UK. The Unite Union said it was not sure it could trust the government promises on future orders. Here's our business correspondent, David Henderson. It's what the government might call the drumbeat of shipbuilding on the Clyde. As a military band welcomed the UK's latest warship, HMS Medway, at an official naming ceremony. May God bless her and all who sail in her. But is the party already over for shipbuilders here, with no future guarantees that this yard will win contracts? Beyond those, it's already signed. The Defence Secretary told me, no, you won't find a better deal. The Clyde is turning out frigates. I cut steel on the first one back in July, HMS uh, Glasgow. There will be seven other heavy frigates. That's 20 years worth of work. There's no other industry in Britain that has such certainty. But the way the Royal Navy's buying its warships has changed. Yards right around the UK are now being offered the chance to bid for work, as they did when the aircraft carriers were built in sections. The aim, less cost to the taxpayer and more ships to sell to foreign navies. Union leaders say it's a cunning plan, 
but a botched one. Well, it won't deliver because I think Michael Fallon's had a flashback to the 1980s when we had this policy, when we had internal competition and complex naval ships within the UK, and it led to one thing, and that was unfortunately shipyards going bust and almost taking the whole shipbuilding industry down with them. So to revisit a policy that's absolutely failed before beggars belief to us. So how does the company which runs this yard sustain a life on the ocean waves? Well, it wants to team up with Camel Laird shipbuilders on Merseyside in a bid to win those future contracts. But as uncertainty looms on the horizon, this drumbeat may have to change. David Henderson, Reporting Scotland, Glasgow.